I mean, silence can be kind of difficult to sit through. Hello to the internet, my name's Craig Montgomery, and we're here today to talk about who even am I? And specifically, today we're going to talk about how to meditate in the terms and ways that I can help you. <laughs> it can be challenging to stay on task when your task is literally to do nothing. But it's an exercise, just like any other, and the benefits are very real. The science is pretty young around what meditation does to us, but there's already measurable changes to the anatomy of the brain when you incorporate meditation into your life. So the hipsters hanging outside your local yoga place are probably not just tripping over inflated egos. They might actually be experiencing a significant difference in the way they experience their life. Most noticeably, meditation is extremely useful in helping to reduce stress and anxiety. It's also common for people to feel more compassionate and open-minded as they grow their practice. And the effect it has on the brain, studies have shown that it increases the size of gray matter in parts of the brain that affect memory storage and executive decision making in people in the study who meditated for a period of three months. There are quite a few studies, but I found one reported on by the Washington Post from a couple years ago that explained it in layman's terms for those of us who are a little not academically inclined, and I will link below for that. So meditation, good. But how do we stay on focus when it's just really difficult to sit still sometimes? The first and most important answer is dedication. It takes practice to sit still and do the mental work. Then I would suggest thinking about the peace of mind that you want to achieve, or the stress relief that you would like to experience, or the problem that you can't stop worrying about, and think of meditation as the work you can do to get to that place. Having it as a sense of reward can make it feel like the work that you're doing is effective even when you feel like you're not doing very much. Because that happens a lot with meditation. <laughs> I would also suggest assigning a time period, something like five or 10 minutes to start off with, and dedicating that time to sit still, whether you feel like you're doing the work or not. Building a habit of being able to sit still trains your mind to be able to achieve that state of calmness where you can start to do work. I would also suggest to understand that it's really difficult and that you're going to fail. Failure is a natural part of learning. It's uncomfortable, but it's necessary. And when you actually have your butt on the ground and every thought in your head is screaming for you to get up and do something, don't. Stay committed to your time. Prove to yourself that you can do it. You can sit and be uncomfortable. Try to let the thoughts go. They're going to be sticky and tempting and holding on to you for dear life. I like the concept of floating in a river for these thoughts. If you imagine yourself as floating in a river and the thoughts are the stream that's passing you by, the ones that are trying to hold on to you are like rocks and you're going to be tempted to hold on to them as like a grasp. But instead, if you let them pass you by, then that is a way of visualizing the letting go. One of the big temptations here is going to be having thoughts about the thoughts. The sticky thoughts that come to you, you are going to try to assign meaning to them. You're going to think, oh, is this a bad thought? Should I not be thinking that? And it's really important to try and let go of the judgments, to let the thought come, touch you on its way out, and leave without giving it the the higher functioning thought of what does this mean, is it good or bad, and that type of thing. Another concept that I found very useful for loud thoughts that are demanding your attention comes from a book by Dr. Russ Harris called The Happiness Trap. It's a great read in general if you want more information on ACT and mindfulness. So the concept that he describes in the book that I found very useful is a visualization practice. Basically, if you have an image or a scene or a verbal phrase even that is becoming a vicious cycle that your brain is obsessing over and you cannot let go of, um, the practice is to imagine a television in your mind's eye and let that image or the scene play out on the television. If it's just a verbal sound, you can imagine the sound being played from the television and then you play with it. You let it play forwards. You flip the image, you watch the scene backwards, you move the words around, and then you let them play again. You just basically try and play with it in a sense that it's not just happening, and that will let you feel like you have a little bit more control over what 
that thought is. And then you start to put actual physical distance in your mind between the TV and yourself and let the image get smaller and smaller and smaller and let the sound get more distant and more quiet and starting to sound like it's from really far away. And then once you feel that distance, it becomes a lot easier to let it pass by. And you may have to repeat this process with a specific thought if it's really bothersome, but over time it really should help you let it go more easily because you'll, you'll stop feeling its hold on you. There are a lot of different mental practices like this out there. These are just a couple that have been very effective for me. So it might take some researching on your part to find the things that really work for you. But the biggest task is always going to be coming back to yourself. Every time your thoughts try and pull you away, you have to recommit to coming back to the silence. Staying in that state of calm as best as you can for the time period that you've assigned for yourself. And it gets easier and easier over time. I would say even to the point where it becomes enjoyable, you look forward to having that stillness because it, it recharges you and gives you energy to go out and do the other things in your life. It's not easy, but I really do believe that it can do great things for you. So that's going to be it for this week. Let me know what you think about this and if you've been trying meditation and if what I talked about today has you know some concepts of things that might be able to help you with the things you've been struggling with and if not what are you struggling with and i'll see if maybe i can find some some of those mental practices that might help you um i'd love to hear about it comment below if you like the video give it a like and as always take care of yourself Okay, bye.